Good evening. My name is Jeffrey Ruggles, and I am going to give a slide lecture uh, this evening on the history and legends of Natural Bridge. Unfortunately, with our, given, our circumstances these days, uh, I'm having to record this lecture, and I don't have you in front of me uh, to give me uh, instant feedback, but uh, we, I think we'll be able to uh, uh, do it this way uh, as we have to. As far as who I am, uh, I ran a restaurant for a number of years down on the uh, 17th Street Farmer's Market in Richmond. Uh, then I went to work for uh, Virginia Historical Society and Charlie Bryan, uh, where I was the uh, curator of prints and photographs. And then after that, I worked for VCU. Uh, I was the administrator of the Rhodes Scholar program. And I don't know if you know Rhodes Scholar, that is a senior educational travel program. And it was through Rhodes Scholar that I came to know Natural Bridge because we operated a number of programs down at Natural Bridge. And that's kind of where my interest came. And uh, so now I'll proceed to my talk. Natural Bridge is a famous landmark and it was famous early in the nation's history. The subtitle to my talk is From the Sublime to the Ridiculous. We will start with the bridge's longtime distinguished proprietor, Thomas Jefferson. It's er the early renown of the bridge was due to Jefferson's uh, interest in it, and, and he was the one who thought it was sublime. Thomas Jefferson, after law school, became a frontier lawyer from 1767 to 1774. He probably had a lot of property-related uh, practice at that time. The first settlers into the Shenandoah Valley came in the 1730s, and he was working uh, beginning in the 1760s. One of the real centers for land deals was Augusta County the county seat, Stanton. And this is a, uh, a, a marker in front of the Augusta County Courthouse which shows the county extending. Here's Stanton on the right side and the Blue Ridge. And here the, the Ohio River and uh, the Mississippi River. Augusta County claimed land all the way to the Mississippi. So many property uh, titles are in the Augusta County Courthouse for areas far to the west uh, of Augusta County. So it was, a, it was an important place for land uh, titles and Thomas Jefferson went to Stanton at least 20 times during his law practice. And I hope this map uh, shows up uh, to you. The, uh, over here on the right, this red star is the area where, where Jefferson lived and then he would go west into the valley. Here's uh, Stanton with a star up here. And his circuit included down the valley and down to the lower left is Botetourt County. That was another county that, that claimed to be, have land all the way to the Mississippi. And he probably went down there for uh, business too. In 1767 anyway, this star down here on the lower left, that is the site of Natural Bridge. And that was the first time that Jefferson uh, saw the bridge. Jefferson had studied at William and Mary, and that's the Wren building there, under uh, George Wythe, and that's the uh, bust on the left from the uh, state capitol collection. And he learned how Williamsburg worked. So uh, Natural Bridge at that time was crown land. Uh, people had purchased land all around the bridge, but they did not see any practical uh, purposes for uh, the bridge itself. So. Jefferson had a survey made. He knew about surveys too because his father was a surveyor. And he applied to the land office in Williamsburg in 1773. He got a title issued in 1774. It was signed by Lord Dunmore on the right here and the representative of George III on the left. And that 
title states for diverse good causes and considerations, but more especially for and in consideration of the sum of 20 shillings of good and lawful money. Jefferson got the title to Natural Bridge. He owned it from 1774 until he died 52 years later. Well, 1774 was just before Jefferson became a, a very prominent person. In a couple years, uh, he became uh, one of the, the leading uh, politicians in Virginia, and his influence was felt in many ways. At a certain point in 1778, it was determined to create a new county in between Augusta and Botetourt, which gained the name Rockbridge. And since Jefferson owned the Rockbridge, I suspect that he had uh, quite a bit of, to do with that, that name. He became Virginia's second governor in 1779, and he served until June of 1781. In October 1781, with the help of the French Army and Navy, the Battle of Yorktown was won and the British were defeated. After that battle, the French Army stayed in Virginia for quite a while waiting for transport back to Europe. So some of the uh, officers of the French army toured around, and in particular, the Marquis de Castelot toured, who was a member of the French Academy, toured Virginia. At Thomas Jefferson's advice, de Castelot visited Natural Bridge in April 1782. He sent an engineer, Baron de Turpin, to draw the bridge in May of 1782. Turpin took measurements and made drawings for a report. So this is a 1782 uh, version of, of the bridge. Then in the mid-1780s, two publications made Natural Bridge famous in Europe. For de Chastelot's book of travels was a huge book, uh, very expensive for the elite, and the only illustrations in it were, the, were of Natural Bridge, four illustrations of Natural Bridge. The other book that made Natural Bridge famous was Jefferson's own Notes on the State of Virginia, which was published first in France in 1785, then in other versions in the later 1780s. Jefferson described Natural Bridge in his book, and from that it became one of the, the very famous American landmarks. This is a French wallpaper screen from the collection of the Virginia Historical Society with Indians in the foreground and Natural Bridge in the background. Another figure who has been linked to Natural Bridge and is particularly linked in the names that Natural Bridge uses for its, the rooms in the hotel and, and its literature is George Washington. Here he is on the left at 18 as a surveyor. This is a, uh, a model up at uh, Mount Vernon and on the right we have a plaque placed there by the Daughters of the American Revolution in 1926 that states, Natural Bridge was surveyed by George Washington about 1750. Well, in fact, on the wall of the bridge is an inscription, GW, which is quite a ways up the wall, so it's really hard to get to it, but uh, they, they advertise that, and it's, it's uh, part of the tours. And in fact, there's even a picture of uh, George Washington carving it. But we have to question the truth of this particular legend. Oh, I should mention a couple of other legends that, that show you how much uh, Washington was appreciated in the 1800s, and uh, Jefferson uh, was not yet appreciated. There was a story that Thomas Jefferson was able to throw a stone up to the arch of the bridge, but the, another story that George Washington threw a stone over the bridge. And in 1927, a stone was found carved on GW on one side and a surveyor's cross on the other. However, this stone appears to have gone missing. But just to look at the facts of the matter, this is a map of the Fairfax Grant. 
and I don't know how much detail you'll be able to see here. You've got the uh, bay on the right, the Potomac is on the north side of it, uh, the Rappahannock is, is going up the middle, and then there's a red line over on the left, it's called the Fairfax line, that was actually surveyed by uh, Jefferson's father, Peter, and uh, that shows the extent of the Fairfax holdings. And that's who Washington worked for as a surveyor. He worked for the Fairfax interests, and the main town that's associated with Washington from that early period of his life is Winchester, which is in Frederick County at the very top of, of Virginia. And there is no evidence of him surveying below the Fairfax line. Now, there was an instance in uh, 1756 when Washington was a a militia official that he went south to uh, search to, to inspect forts and here on the left we can uh, see uh, Fort William Fort William here and and here's Washington's really comes down from Stanton through Lexington and he's the, the, the ro valley road at that time was on the western side of the valley and natural bridges over on the eastern side of the valley so it appears that he went by then he goes down to Fort William uh, and further south, all, the Roanoke area, all the way down to the Carolina line. He's searching all in this area, but there's really no uh, evidence that he went by a natural bridge uh, on that trip. And he was pretty busy. Uh, there's hardly any reason to suspect uh, that he would have got even seen natural bridge. Uh, so the connection of Washington to natural bridge is a bit of a stretch. But we really don't need Washington because we have uh, Jefferson uh, as a full-fledged uh, uh, owner and uh, visitor to Natural Bridge. There's a, there are five different instances where uh, Jefferson is known to have come to the bridge, and there's uh, another eight possible. Most of them are after he retired from public life. He inherited uh, land uh, through his wife in the Lynchburg area, and eventually he built a house down there called Poplar Forest. And uh, many of his trips in uh, 1815 and 1816 to the bridge were when he went down to uh, Poplar Forest uh, to visit. Uh, this is an engraving of the bridge made in 1798 by Isaac Weld. In 1817, Jefferson visited from Poplar Forest to the bridge with his two granddaughters, uh, Ellen and, and Cornelia, and in 1821, at age 78, he uh, rode on a horse to Natural Bridge. Uh, he was in the saddle for six days, he said. When Jefferson learned that some neighbors at Natural Bridge were poaching some of his lumber, he installed a caretaker. And the gentleman who represented here on the left was a free uh, black man named Patrick Henry. So he was probably born about the time that Patrick Henry was governor, uh, who built a cabin right at the top of the bridge around 1810 to 1813. He had a guest room where people could come and stay who wanted to visit the bridge. And Patrick Henry would uh, give tours. He, uh, Patrick Henry uh, married, uh, he ended up being able to purchase his wife, uh, Louisa, who's also represented in this picture. Uh, Patrick Henry kept a book for uh, sentiments uh, of the visitors to the Natural Bridge, uh, which would have been uh, very interesting, I'm sure, but it was destroyed when the cabin burned in 1845. Uh, some of the guests to the bridge included John Marshall, James Monroe, Martin Van Buren, and Sam Houston. Actually, Sam Houston was born in Rockbridge County, so that's not too surprising. And there's a quote from Henry Clay, the bridge not made with hands that spans a river carries a highway and makes two mountains one. Here's a close-up. This is a painting by Frederick Church from the 1850s, and by that time, uh, Patrick Henry was no longer at the bridge, but the story of a, of a black man who gave tours uh, at the bridge obviously persisted, and that's what he's represented in this painting. Uh, I don't know how many uh, of you all were able to get down to the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. They had an exhibition of uh, paintings of uh, Natural Bridge uh, last year, uh, a very nice collection of paintings, and uh, it was at that exhibition I was enabled to get a, a close-up 
uh, of the painting uh, for this scene. And, and a couple of the other uh, slides uh, were from, I'm able to get from, at that show. Uh, Jefferson uh, never really made too much uh, commercial use of, of the bridge. Uh, on the grounds was a, a cave where uh, there was a guano, uh, bat guano, which was used for uh, uh, saltpeter for use in making uh, gunpowder, probably in the War of 1812 period. And uh, there's also a story that a, a shot maker uh, rented uh, space from uh, Jefferson and he would melt the lead up above and drop the uh, lead through the air and as it went through the air it would round and then it hit the water and harden and, and that's how they made shot uh, in those days. Uh, but that couldn't have been too much of a money maker. But anyway, Jefferson uh, kept uh, the uh, uh, bridge. Uh, as I said, he died in 1826 and his uh, family kept it into the 1830s. Now this is a view from the uh, French engineer of above, above the, uh, the bridge, and the uh, flow uh, is from the right to the left. And uh, Jefferson's theory for how a natural bridge formed was that it seems to have been cloven through its length by some great convulsion. He put that in the uh, notes on the state of Virginia. A friend of uh, Jefferson's named uh, Francis Gilmer who was actually a very brilliant man. Unfortunately, he died young. Uh, Francis Gilmer had a, a lot to do with the founding of the University of Virginia. In fact, uh, Gilmer was the one that Jefferson sent to uh, Great Britain uh, to hire the faculty. Uh, for the, and, and their Gilmer Hall is, is on McCormick uh, Road uh, still. Uh, but Gilmer uh, visited uh, Natural Bridge in 1815 with Jefferson and wrote an article in 1818 in which he suggested a slow process form the bridge, not a violent one. And that, of course, is uh, the more accurate uh, theory. The, much of the uh, ground uh, in, in the uh, valley area is what's called a, a karst. It's a geological condition. Uh, karst landforms are generally the result of uh, a mild, mildly acidic water uh, acting on a weakly, weakly soluble bedrock such as limestone or dolomite. Uh, these are the natural chimneys in, a, in Augusta County. Uh, there are other forms would be uh, caverns, which there are many of uh, up in the valley, and uh, also hot and disappearing springs are, are typical which uh, are also to be found up, up in the, uh, the mountain area of Virginia. Uh, uh, this is a, a geological chart, you know, uh, different types of uh, rock deposits. Uh, the natural bridge is at the bottom of the picture, uh, and these different uh, types of uh, rock deposits, some of which are, are limestone and some of which are uh, dolomite limestone combinations. Uh, the uh, geology of the uh, Blue Ridge and the valley is, is pretty complex. Uh, the Blue Ridge is, is a much older uh, mountain chain. In fact, the Blue Ridge, when it was a, a massive mountain chain, uh, had no uh, trees on it because it was before plants had evolved. Uh, to the west of the Blue Ridge at that time was oceans, and that's why the limestone was deposited to the west. And then later, when continents were crashing into each other, the Alleghenies were pushed up and the valley was created. Uh, and uh, there's a similar, uh, fairly complex uh, geological uh, explanation for the creation of the bridge itself. Uh, now, in this uh, map, the natural bridge is in this area, and there's a stream called, uh, that flows down by the, by the uh, hotel uh, that had created a, a, a Cascade Creek, had created a valley. And then the upper area up here, which is a higher elevation, drained up to this Pogue Run up here, which drained into the uh, Mari River to the north. And what happened was that the uh, water in the upper area started seeping through the cracks in the uh, limestone and gradually carving it out until it had carved a, an underground a cavern to bring the water and join this valley and flow in. And this is the James River at the bottom. So basically the water seeping through gradually created a, a long cavern and then the ceiling of the ca cavern collapsed except in the one spot of Natural Bridge. And here's an aerial view. Cedar Creek is the name of that new creek. 
relatively new creek flowing down. Here's the bridge and Cascade Creek kind of flowed down this valley like this. And so this valley or cavern ended up joining this valley and, and that's Natural Bridge. And you'll note that Route 11 goes right over Natural Bridge to this day. And one of the uh, exhibits or, or things to see on the walk up at Natural Bridge is Lost River. And you stick your head in this little cavern and you can hear water rushing and they, they say nobody's ever found where the source of this river, it's a mysterious thing. Well, once the uh, Jefferson family had sold uh, the, uh, the bridge, uh, people came in and put a, a hotel there. Actually, it was a, uh, a, a man named uh, Joseph Lackland in 1835 opened uh, an inn called the Forest Inn. And uh, he was the first of many proprietors and managers over 180 years. The resorts at Natural Bridge have gone through several eras of transportation. The horse and wagon era, the canal, which briefly uh, was a brief era, but the canal did come within a couple miles, the railroad, and the automobile. In the 1830s, basically, uh, when the hotels first put there, it was when we were entering an era of uh, springs resorts in the mountains. There were a whole series of resorts in the mountains. Uh, for instance, uh, this one's a couple valleys over in Warm Springs Valley, uh, Hot Springs, which is today the uh, home of the Homestead uh, Inn. And uh, this is up the valley. This is the Warm Springs, which today is called Jefferson Baths. And there are a couple of bathhouses here, right here, that are, still survive. Uh, there's a movement up there to restore these uh, uh, historically. And uh, this is in uh, White Sulphur Springs uh, over the line in West Virginia, uh, out 64 West, and that's uh, today is uh, Greenbrier. Uh, now, Natural Bridge never had the uh, cachet as a place to visit these, these other places did, but it was a place that people would often stop on the way to the other in springs and so the uh, goal of uh, the proprietors at Natural Bridge was always to get people to stay a couple extra days. There's a story of the early Natural Bridge that uh, the innkeeper was old-fashioned and, 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 uh, and cheery in its hospitality. Servants built a blazing fire in your room, fried chicken, spoon bread, and corn pones were served proprietor was a genial, fox-chasing, hard-riding Virginian who regaled his guests as they sat around the crackling fire in the evenings with stirring tales of the chase, excursions to the mountains to the west, and with local traditions of the old days. Captain, uh, well, here, here's the forest in uh, a little later, because it's in the era of photography, uh, and on the right would be the rooms where people stayed, and on the left, I think, would be the uh, dining hall or dining room. Uh, and uh, coach transport. Uh, Captain uh, Lachlan uh, installed an amusement, which was a hexagonal iron cage that was suspended from a winch. And it rode along a long iron pole. And so you would uh, get in this elevator and be winched down to the base of the bridge uh, for $1. Uh, and uh, while you were, went down and back up, a, a violinist played. Uh, and uh, I think I would be terrified to go in something like that, uh, particularly in the quality of ironwork in that early period. Uh, one day, a, there's a story that a man climbed up the guide pole from the bottom to the top of the bridge, and it turned out he was a sailor. And, you know, sailors uh, did things like that in that period. Uh, also, there were no uh, walls on the top of the bridge at that time, uh, which made it a little more exciting. Uh, Jefferson, in fact, wrote, uh, few men have the resolution to walk to the parapet and look over into the abyss. You involuntarily fall on your hands and feet, creep to the parapet, and peep over it. Looking down from this height about a minute gave me a violent headache. And this is a, a painting by uh, Joshua Shaw from about 1820 that I think was based on uh, Jefferson's uh, description. 
Now, one thing that people did try was to, to climb to the top of, of Natural Bridge. Uh, some brave college students did it in 1833 and in 1845. Uh, some uh, things were, were not so uh, successful in their outcome. Uh, a young man named Corbin Lackland fell from Pulpit Rock in 1833, 50 feet from the top. And a man named Robert Walker fell in 1845. Both were killed. A stranger leaped in 1843 who was never identified. And in 1865, John Rice fell from a crag but was saved by the branches of a tree. Parts of Natural Bridge uh, get, had names, they, they became named. Uh, this is a view uh, from the upstream side looking down, and on the left is Cathedral Wall on the, here, and here, up here is Pulpit Rock, up near the top on the left. Um, uh, there was a lady named uh, Miss Randolph who uh, stood on a cedar stump at the center of the arch on the north side, so perhaps this stump or right in, the, in this area. She stood on a, st a stump that was 18 inches in diameter and about two feet out and smiling and waving. And meanwhile, her companion was fainted dead away. Another uh, activity uh, in this period, and this is a period, say, in the mid-1800s, uh, when people are very used to seeing uh, engravings and etchings, pictures that are composed of small little scratches and lines, um, very much like a rock face looked. And so people would see uh, pictures in the rock face. And uh, one of the main uh, pictures that people would see was a, was a spread eagle a, a great American spread eagle with uh, its talons uh, in the shoulders of a British lion below. Now imagine that that picture would just happen to be on, the, on this rock. Uh, but uh, I looked and looked for that eagle and, and, and actually you know, at one point uh, I think I, I saw the eagle. So uh, if, you, if you look hard enough uh, at these walls you, you can see pictures. Uh, uh, this is a, a photograph made at the top of, of the bridge in uh, 1859, so by that time uh, they had put some walls in. Uh, and uh, in this period in the 1850s, actually, oh, here, here's a, a view of the modern wall uh, with the gorge beyond, so that the, the bridge, the wall looks over the bridge looks pretty much the same today as it did then. It may be the same wall, I don't know. Uh, in the 1850s, uh, or the mid 19th century, uh, the bridge became a subject for painters, uh, particularly with the uh, landscape schools, the Hudson River School and other landscape approaches in American art. Uh, Edward Hicks uh, made two paintings featuring the bridge in the uh, 1820s uh, with his uh, biblical uh, interpretations. Um, a number of prints were made. This is a uh, Courier and Ives uh, lithograph. Uh, and uh, the colorist obviously knew that it was the Blue Ridge and had to make the mountains blue. Uh, this is an Edward Beyer uh, view of the bridge uh, in his album of Virginia. Uh, Beyer included three different views uh, of the bridge. This is a uh, John Henry Hill uh, after the Civil War and a couple of very nice uh, paintings that were both featured at the uh, Virginia Museum uh, by David Johnston uh, about 1860. He was uh, considered to be a uh, second generation uh, Hudson River School uh, painter. And uh, so this is, this is the second uh, David Johnston uh, painting. The photographers uh, also photographed the bridge, but it's something about the, the medium that the uh, painters are, were better able to capture uh, the, the grandeur of, of the bridge. Uh, and the photography was, was not quite uh, up to the task uh, in the early days. In the 18, 1880s, uh, the railroad uh, reached uh, Natural Bridge. Actually, it's about three miles up. The lower right, you see the Natural Bridge Station was right on the James River. You can just see the bridge here. 
And uh, the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio, actually it was the Richmond and Allegheny originally uh, came up the James River along the canal towpath uh, up to uh, Buchanan, uh, which is about 10 miles south of, the, of, of Natural Bridge at the bottom of the Valley of Virginia. And uh, so that was a, an east-west uh, access by train up the James River Valley. And then the Norfolk and Western was a, a, a train that went up and down the valley. And uh, those intersected at, at Natural Bridge Station. So there are two different train lines. And the, um, the hotel would send out a big carriage to meet the train. So you ride the train and then get on the, the hotel's uh, wagon and, and, and ride the three miles uh, up to the bridge. This is Colonel Henry Parsons, who was the proprietor of Natural Bridge from uh, 1881 to 1894. Uh, he built his cottage uh, that he lived in that's uh, right on the brow of the uh, bridge and pretty much where uh, Patrick Henry's cabin had been, the original cabin at the site. Um, Parsons was a pretty effective uh, manager as far as I know, but then in uh, 1894, he was shot and killed in Clifton Forge, and it became quite a case up there. And in fact, the man who uh, shot him uh, really never uh, paid a penalty for it. Uh, and I'm not sure of all the circumstances of that. In the 1890s, uh, a new hotel was built, the Appledore Hotel, uh, which is pretty much in the spot that the modern hotel occupies. Uh, and the old uh, Forest Inn was kind of off to the right in, in this picture. Uh, the Apple Door was, was a resort that was open from uh, April to November and uh, started to try to compete a little more with the other Springs resorts as far as having uh, different kinds of attractions. Uh, they got their own uh, spring water. Uh, they had a chemist to analyze the uh, water of Cascade Creek and it was shown to have certain elements that were uh, much uh, in, in vogue in that period for, as having good, good things to you would get good results if you drank this water. Uh, they put in horseback riding with trails. Uh, to the left here is the Glen uh, with a bridge in the background. They dammed up uh, the creek and, and had canoeing. Uh, the pavilion here was where they had orchestra and dancing. They served meals there. Uh, there were bowling alleys and a pool and billiard room. So it was a full-fledged uh, resort in this period. So this is the uh, late 19th century into the early 20th century. Uh, they built a nice uh, swimming pool, 30 feet by 80 feet, uh, three to seven foot uh, depth. Uh, it was spring-fed, so that thing was probably ice cold uh, 12 months a year. But people were tougher then, so they probably enjoyed their swimming. And another thing that the visitors left was some graffiti. Here's uh, LBW, you see it when you go down to the bridge. If you look carefully, you'll see a lot of graffiti. Uh, I guess people had more time because that's a kind of a time-consuming sort of graffiti. Uh, here's Emily Stevenson. Uh, this is uh, Jay Hay from Philadelphia from uh, 1855. And uh, well, this is uh, more graffiti just because it was a Seemed, seemed interesting. This is actually from the uh, cavern at Grotto's, the Grand Cavern at Grotto's, uh, and all this graffiti is, is definitely uh, 18, 1800s. Uh, and uh, here's a little more modest. This is 2014 uh, graffiti in pen. I don't think it's going to have the, going to last as well as the carved graffiti. And so this is the way the hotel appeared in uh, 1906, 1907, the first couple cars coming in these big porches uh, with rockers and uh, you know, you'd sit there and smoke your cigar and rock and look at the uh, Blue Ridge. When you uh, look out from the uh, hotel today, and it's the same site as this hotel, uh, you see uh, the Blue Ridge, it's called Thunder Ridge with uh, Apple Orchard Mountain. Uh, it's a good view. Here's a postcard showing the, the rockers and the front portico. Uh, the, uh, after the train, the next evolution was into the automobile travel. And the, uh, 
the valley and the Blue Ridge became uh, an important site for this kind of uh, mountain tourism. Uh, Skyline Drive uh, would be uh, built from uh, 1930 to 1934, and then uh, after that the Blue Ridge Parkway was extended south, so you had that highway. Uh, the 1930s was a period when the uh, United States was uh, building its national highway system, and uh, so uh, the Valley Road, which is which was an ancient road that went up and down the valley, uh, it became Route 11, uh, a U.S. national highway, and it had formerly moved, uh, gone up and down on the west side of the valley, kind of a couple miles from a natural bridge, but they shifted uh, Route 11 to go right by a natural bridge uh, when it was built in the 1930s and use Natural Bridge itself as the highway bridge, uh, and which it still is. And so uh, Natural Bridge became a, a rest stop, an auto rest stop with a coffee shop and a gift shop and a place to have a picnic. And, and then you, know, you stop, you can go see the bridge. And, uh, so it's a stop on the highway. Uh, and actually, one other thing I should mention, uh, as early as 1911, uh, the first national forest was uh, formed in the western part of the state, and that was called Natural Bridge National Forest. And uh, then in the 1930s, that was revised and became George Washington National Forest towards the north and Thomas Jefferson National Forest uh, towards the southwest. Electricity came in early to uh, a number of these resorts. Uh, probably the first and most important practical concern was as a way to pump water up to the uh, resort. And uh, you pump it to a, you know, a water tank, and then you, then you could have your water service. Uh, but once you had the water, then you could have lights. And then in the 1920s, uh, they put lights down on the bridge. The night illumination and pageant. Uh, opened in 1927, it was called Profound and Breathtaking. It was done by some people from a Westinghouse uh, Corporation. And uh, in the early 1930s, a, uh, a drama was uh, created called The Drama of Creation, which tells the seven days of the creation of the Earth through lighting on the uh, natural bridge and then and through uh, uh, music like uh, Verdi, Liszt, Wagner, and Chopin, uh, and uh, it, it still goes on today, uh, so it, that, that's a long-running uh, show. Uh, more modern lights today. Another tradition has been a uh, Easter uh, radio service at, at sunrise, su Easter su sunrise service. Uh, and then on the right here, we have a plaque that's, that's on the grounds, and that's uh, the gentleman there is our Carter Warmly, who is a newspaper editor in Lynchburg, who wrote a poem about the Bridge of Years. So there's a lot of romance uh, about the bridge and its origins. Now, uh, oh, also, uh, Natural Bridge became a, a brand name. Uh, this was a shoe factory in uh, Lynchburg that produced uh, Natural Bridge shoes and, and uh, stockings. And uh, actually, today the building is a uh, boutique hotel in Lynchburg. Uh, and part of the promotion was that Natural Bridge is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And uh, I'm not going to say that was a, that's a stretch, but I mean it is a good slogan. Uh, there are a lot of billboards. If you ever drove uh, up and down the Shenandoah Valley up uh, up until about really 10 years ago. Natural Bridge billboards were, only Luray Caverns had more billboards than Natural Bridge. They were all over the place up there. Uh, but this, this claim as one of the seven natural wonders of the world, uh, I mean, there are a lot, actually quite a few arches and things. Uh, this is the uh, natural tunnel down in Scott uh, County in Southwest Virginia. That's pretty dramatic. It's a little harder to get to, so not as many people have heard of it, but there's, there's an organization called the uh, Natural Arch and Bridge Society, and they have uh, a website, believe it or not, with all kinds of uh, arches from all around the world. And just to show a few, just for interest, this is uh, Natural Bridge of Kentucky. 
Uh, Kentucky has the uh, second most uh, arches and bridges of, of any state. And it's not quite as dramatic as our natural bridge, but it is, it is a bridge and it's pretty big. Uh, this is the, uh, these are the raft river arches in Washington state. That's obviously formed by ocean action as opposed to uh, creek action. Uh, this is the natural bridge park in Santa Cruz, California. And this is called a strong arm arch that's also in California. And this is called Royal Arch, and that is in Arizona. And Arizona has almost as many uh, arches as Kentucky does. So it's in third place. And this is uh, Owacoma Natural Bridge in Arches National Park in Utah. And Utah is the champion state for arches. Uh, this is Landscape Arch in Arches National Park in Utah. And it's 290 feet from one side to the other. The, the society has set up standards for how you measure the width or height of, a, of an arch. And so this is the uh, longest in the US and the third longest in the world. Uh, this is Rainbow Arch in Rainbow Bridge. Uh, this is Rainbow Bridge in Rainbow Bridge National Monument in Utah, 234 feet wide. Uh, this is the Pont d'Arc Arch in France. It's in the southwest of France. Uh, it's near the Chauvet Caves, where, the, where a lot of cave paintings are, and really not far from uh, Marseille. Uh, and this is an arch that is said to have been discovered in 2010 in Afghanistan. Well, the people who lived there knew about it, but I guess you know the people who keep track of arches didn't learn about it until 2010. You can see there's a person down there at the bottom. There, that's pretty big. This is the Aloba Arch in Chad, and that is uh, 250 feet wide, and there's actually a person down at the bottom. That's huge. Uh, th this is another one in North Africa, very tall. This is the Spurt Arch in uh, Antarctica, and this is the Ferry Bridge in Guangxi, China. At 400 feet, that is the widest arch that has been found on Earth. So Natural Bridge is pretty special. I mean, it's, it's a great natural wonder, but if it's just a short list of seven, uh, I think it's controversial to say that it would be on that short list of seven. Anyway, so now we're into our motoring era, the post-World War II uh, car travel uh, and uh, National Highway Route 11. Uh, so Natural Bridge is a roadside attraction. They built a, uh, a new visitor center here. Uh, they've got a new motor in, some cabins up above. Uh, there, there's a nice walk. You, when you walk under the bridge, you have about a mile walk where you can walk up through the gorge and see uh, a very nice stream. You know, we've seen uh, a mink there. Uh, there's a, there's, uh, it is, it's something to do, you know, as, as well as see the arch. Uh, and here's the bridge, I mean the uh, hotel uh, in, the, in the early car era, post-World War II, all through the 50s, it maintained its old character. And then in 1963, a fire started in the kitchen and uh, burned that thing down, a huge fire. Uh, people say that the owners uh, didn't make too much of an effort to put the fire out there, kind of happy to see it go. Is, is that, that was a rumor. You know, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, and uh, they, they rescued very little. I imagine there were a lot of antiques that burned up. There's a couple of brass urns that they rescued, but not much else was rescued uh, out, of, out of that old hotel. And then they built this new hotel, which uh, even in the artist's renderings doesn't look that great. I mean, the 60s, let's face it, were not a great era for architecture. and. Uh, the Natural Bridge Hotel kind of proves it. Uh, even though it has arches and a portico, it's still pretty heavy. Uh, and this is the uh, inside appointments. This is the uh, lobby. It doesn't look that much different today. Uh, dining. And you can see the new hotel. And then here's that old cottage 
Uh, that has been torn down. That was torn down in the 1960s. See, there's the bridge right there. There's the visitor center. So it's all very close. Red Fox Inn is where you can get a, a drink. Uh, they had, for a while, they had a, uh, like a ski lift to bring people up and down to, to walk down to see the bridge. Uh, they put a, uh, a little museum uh, in, in the parking lot there. Here it is. Uh, it, this is when it's a wax museum. Originally, it's a, an old, uh, old autos uh, collection there for a number of years in the 1960s. Then it became the wax museum. Uh, and uh, if anybody has been to the fancy uh, wax museums in the big cities, you know, sometimes when you look at the images that are represented there, there's a, they're a little bit off. And this one, uh, the images were, were even a little more off. I mean, they tried hard. Uh, Adam and Eve, they started with in the Wax Museum. And then uh, the Monicans, or the local uh, Indians uh, of the area, uh, are represented. Uh, some of the early settlers and their adventures uh, represented. Uh, this is an old story, uh, a politically incorrect story. Uh, uh, of these two uh, early uh, settlers uh, having a discussion and, and the one trades uh, his uh, container of, uh, of moonshine or some other drink for the, the other one's wife. That's the story they told. Uh, a big uh, Stonewall Jackson is a big uh, figure in the area because uh, Lexington's only uh, 10, 11 miles away and so they had a Stonewall Jackson uh, image in their wax museum, although there, there's no evidence of any Civil War uh, activities at the bridge. Uh, they had the American presidents. There's Jefferson on the left, uh, and Monroe and Washington in a, in a pub. That's probably where the Founding Fathers spent most of their time, in fact. Uh, and here we have uh, Frederick Douglass on the right. That's uh, up on the lectern there is Obama. Uh, Doug Wilder is uh, to the left. And uh, this is down in the shop downstairs. You can go downstairs and see how they made uh, wax uh, figures. And I think this uh, Ben Franklin on the right was a little too scary to put out in the display. They just left them in the shop. They also have some caverns there. Uh, these caverns were discovered in the late 1800s. In the 1970s, however, they uh, went and they tunneled in to make them easy of access so you wouldn't have to slip through all these small little places to get into them. You could just walk down a hallway. And they're deep. That's what they advertise. They're, they're deep. They're very orange. They're not quite as uh, full of interesting uh, uh, features as some of the others like uh, Grand Caverns or Lure. They also have a, a little Indian village. It's a Monacan village. Uh, the lady at the upper right, uh, Victoria, runs, runs that. And she's a very good teacher. Lots of school buses with uh, fourth grade kids uh, come there. And it's actually a, a very good uh, teaching tool. And, and the village is, is, uh, has a lot of authenticity to it. Now, just up the street from Natural Bridge is the uh, Natural Bridge Zoo, which has been a little bit controversial. Uh, uh, on the right is a billboard uh, put up by uh, some uh, protesters of, of, of for animal treatment. Uh, uh, and, uh, but the bridge uh, is, the zoo is still open, Natural Bridge Zoo is still open. Uh, there's a racetrack up there, Natural Bridge Racetrack. Uh, these are a couple things up, up right up Route 11. There's the pink Cadillac on the left, which is if you're going to get lunch up there, that's where you need to go. It's, it's, it's sort of a, 50s, 60s rock and roll theme. Uh, they have a Lion Country Safari. Uh, and so what you do there is you, you pay, pay your admission. You get a bucket of uh, some kind of a feed. You roll your windows down, and then you drive through. And then the animals will stick their faces in and slurp up all the uh, feed out of your lap and leave you with some, some animal saliva. So that's kind of a fun event, too. And uh, uh, a local sculptor uh, up there uh, has uh, made his mark. Uh, this, this is uh, from uh, Natural Bridge. This is an advertising uh, sculpture uh, for a feature that he had. Uh, he had something called Foamhenge. Uh, it was off Route 11 there uh, on Natural Bridge land uh, for a number of years. And uh, 
there was an old house on the grounds of Natural Bridge up on a hillside that had been one of the proprietor's houses that was not being lived in or used. So he proposed to Natural Bridge that he would set up a uh, haunted house set up there, which he did. And, uh, and then he did, there he is. Uh, uh, um, Mark Klein to the right there. And that's the entrance to his uh, exhibit area. And uh, his fam most famous exhibit was the uh, Union Army versus the Dinosaurs up in the woods there uh, at Natural Bridge. Uh, and you'd uh, walk through the woods and see different scenes uh, from that event. But then uh, a number of years ago, there was a, a big fire in the spring. The electricity hadn't even been turned on up there, so it seemed like the fire might have been set. And it burned down the house and his exhibit. So that was the end of, uh, of that exhibit there, but he has set up now opposite of the Natural Bridge Zoo. Dinosaur Kingdom still exists, so you can go see the Union Army and the uh, dinosaurs still. Now, a number of years ago, uh, the owner of Natural Bridge decided that uh, he would sell. Uh, he was an older gentleman from uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, unfortunately, the real estate market sort of went down, you know, it was about 2008, 2009, uh, just when he tried to market it. So uh, it took him a little while, and eventually uh, a, uh, it went to auction. It was going to go to auction, but instead of auction, it ended up getting uh, purchased by a, a nonprofit out of uh, Roanoke. And uh, these folks had good ideas. Uh, they wanted to carve off the bridge and the land around it for a state park, and then they were going to run the hotel uh, under this nonprofit. And uh, so some of these things did take place. The uh, state park got set up, which is a great thing. Uh, the cost to go into Natural Bridge went down from $18 to $5. Uh, that's a good move. Uh, and uh, how would you like to be a real estate agent and be able to put, that, put a you know, picture of the bridge and say sold? I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but the, uh, and here's Governor McAuliffe for the opening of the state park uh, underneath the bridge. Uh, and. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the nonprofit proved uh, unable to manage a hotel. They haven't done well on that. They haven't been able to make their payments. They actually borrowed uh, a good portion of the purchase price kind of from the state uh, since they were gonna, it was going to be donated as a state park. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure quite the, the management right now uh, up there, but uh, it, it is open as a state park, which is a good thing. Um, got some. Uh, more details. Now, one thing that did uh, come with it becoming a uh, state park was a study of uh, Route 11 uh, going over top the arch and whether there, that was harming the arch. Uh, and uh, so they got a professor uh, to, uh, from one of the universities up there to do a study. And they got people put sensors all over the bridge to, to read the vibrations and, and uh, measure, and uh, they did a bunch of different tests. Uh, 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 it was Radford University, a geologist, they give credit where credit's due, uh, and uh, little flying things to take pictures and, and uh, uh, vibration monitoring. And uh, in the end, they, they decided that uh, in the long term, there should be a bridge, a new bridge over that. But for, for the time being, we're OK to keep driving uh, over the bridge. And I don't know, there may be a weight limit uh, on the bridge. Anyway, so that sort of brings us up to, the, up to date uh, on, on uh, Natural Bridge. It, it's, it's a natural phenomenon that goes uh, well back in American history. And, and each phase uh, that it's uh, gone through uh, kind of represents a uh, development uh, in our own society, uh, which I think is, is very interesting. Uh, and so uh, thanks uh, very much for uh, uh, letting me uh, provide this uh, lecture.